Hi, this is a recording of a webinar that we presented today on using RockWorks to create video animations. This outline shows the topics that we'll be covering within the next 15 minutes. We'll start by showing a simple utility called PicShow that creates videos from individual images. Next, we'll focus on the RockPlot 3D program and three different ways to create movies. Then, I'll move on to the utilities for making transitional movies of time-based data by morphing grids and solids. Next, we'll touch on some of the Earth app's flyovers and using the Movie Maker within Google Earth. I'll describe how to embed your videos within PowerPoint and describe some of the pitfalls. Finally, I'll recommend some tools for editing these videos. We'll start with the simplest program being PicShow within the Utilities menu. Start by creating a list of images representing the individual frames of an animation. Select the Imagery PicShow option. These images will be displayed in rapid succession. No big deal. The useful part is contained within the File menu. Here, you can save the animation as an animated GIF or AVI video. This program is used as a subroutine by several programs within RockWorks that generate images. The RockPlot 3D program includes three movie making utilities. One for rotating diagrams, another dissecting or slicing through block or solid models, and a third program for showing various geochemical, geotechnical, and geophysical cutoff levels. We'll start with the rotation utility that is accessed by selecting the File Animations Rotation option from the main RockPlot 3D menu. This program allows you to define the axes of rotation, the amount of rotation per frame, and the output format. The main things to notice here are the number of frames and the degrees per frame. In this example, we'll be rotating the diagram 360 degrees in 1 degree increments. This is important in terms of the jerkiness of the final video. Here's an example showing 1 degree rotation increments of various data types. Anything that can be shown within RockPlot 3D can be rendered within a rotational video. The Model Reveal option is what I call dissections. As with the rotation, the Model Reveal option is also accessed from the RockPlot 3D File Animations submenu. With this program, you select the model to be sliced, assuming that there's more than one, and the relative direction of the slicing. The output can be fairly dramatic. More importantly, it can be very illustrative, especially if you watch it repeatedly. If you're willing to stare at one of these long enough, you'll walk away with an intuitive spatial understanding, or nausea. This particular model represents resistivity variations within a sedimentary environment. Think of this as a 3D MRI of the subsurface. The ISO or cutoff levels within a block model can be shown at various levels by right-clicking on the model within the RockPlot 3D data tree and selecting the Animate ISO Level option. You will then be prompted to specify the initial ISO level value, the ISO level increments, and the final ISO level value. The output can be just as dramatic as the dissections, but it can also be very misleading in that some viewers might think that it's showing some sort of migration or movement. It isn't. Instead, an ISO level movie only shows relative concentrations within a static model. RockWorks includes programs for morphing grids and solids. These programs create transitional models between two or more existing models. The net result is that you can produce animations that represent changes between different time intervals. The animations are useful for depicting contaminant plume migrations or the effects of mitigation or in-situ leach mining, hydrocarbon pumping, and hydrothermal changes. Grid morphing is performed by selecting the Morph option from the Utilities Grid menu. You will be presented with a menu asking for the names of the grids that represent the starting and ending models. 
The result is very interesting, especially if you're patient enough to let the program interpolate lots of transitional grids. This is not something that you want to do with an old computer. The solid morphing works in a similar way. Start by selecting the Morph option from the Utilities Solid menu. Select the column within the Rockworks menu that contains a list of the block or solid models and generate animations depicting how things may have migrated within the subsurface. Notice that I said may have migrated. The morphing algorithm is just weighted averaging, so please don't get too literal about these transitions. For example, consider the effects of karstification and paleo channels upon the true migration paths. This algorithm doesn't know about those features and assumes an anisotropic media. The free Earth apps within Rockworks, combined with the Movie Maker option within the free Google Earth program, provide some useful tools for creating very realistic animations. We start by selecting one of the flyover programs within the Rockworks Earth Apps flyover menu. In this case, I've selected the simple Camera Looking Forward option. We specify the data columns within a Rockworks datasheet that define the flight path, the altitude of the camera, and the look down angle of the camera. Within a few seconds, we produced an instant vertigo flyover, or in this case, a flyover circling the upheaval dome crypto feature in Canyonlands National Park. To save this simulation as a video file, select the Movie Maker option from the Google Earth Tools menu. Specify the format, the output file name, the resolution, and then wait. By the way, this number labeled FPS for frames per second will determine the jerkiness or smoothness of the output. The imagery and 3D terrain afforded by Google Earth can create some fairly spectacular presentations, not to mention the spatial awareness provided by recognizable features. In this example, we're using a flyover to depict other features added via the Earth app's utilities such as monitor well locations and draped contaminant concentration contours. In this example, we're seeing some mine level maps and cross sections projected above the ground surface. This is the Pea Ridge Mine in southern Missouri, featuring some rare earth element bearing breccia pipes as shown by the metastasized orange colored polyhedra along the northern flank. PowerPoint presentations can include video, not just pictures. Here's how to do it and some things to watch out for. Select the Insert Video, Video on My PC option from the PowerPoint ribbon menu. You'll be prompted to enter the name of the video and that's pretty much about it. From there, you can specify if the video should start running automatically when the slide containing the video is shown. As an example, consider this presentation. I use this tool to embed all of the videos in order to avoid suspending PowerPoint to run any other programs. But there are some things to keep in mind. These video files can be huge. Now let's say that you've created a PowerPoint on your super fast computer and copied that PowerPoint to a memory stick. You plug the memory stick into a slow computer at a conference and discover, to your horror, that the videos look jerky and ugly. This actually happened last week at the GSA conference and the previous week at the AIPG conference. The trick is to embed lower resolution videos. Most projectors have a lower resolution anyway than your computer screen. Web-based presentations or webinars, such as this one, can also represent a problem. If an audience member has a slow computer or a slow internet connection, the videos might look choppy. Finally, if you're giving a live narration to accompany your video, you won't have the luxury of editing when your narration exceeds the video. For example, I'm recording this narration right now, obviously, and I'll be able to edit the timing of the video later on. This isn't the case with live demonstrations. Inevitably, you'll want to edit your video. Adding music is a great way to jazz up a presentation with otherwise boring animations. Adding narration is obviously advantageous. Adding captions can help if you mumble or if your audience is not native to your language. 
Microsoft includes a free video editor called Movie Maker within Windows. It's easy to use, but you'll quickly outgrow it if you're making more than one video. The Camtasia product from TechSmith is an outstanding piece of software that allows you to add text, highlighting, sound, etc. to your presentation. Camtasia also includes a feature to record your screen contents. In fact, I'm using Camtasia right now to record this PowerPoint presentation. The Sony Movie Studio product is a must-have if you're blending or fading multiple videos. Don't be misled by the price. This is a product with considerable depth and it can be used to generate professional quality videos if you're willing to climb its learning curve. We use both Camtasia and Sony Movie Studio to produce this particular video as well as 100 plus videos on the Rockware YouTube site. The annotation, pans, and zooms were added with Camtasia. The fades were added with Sony Movie Studio. Personally, I couldn't live without either of these products. Well, I could live, but life wouldn't be any fun. So that's it. Get to work and make some movies. Thanks for watching.